we'll get through it kind of thing. Sold. Uh, I, s- I mean, the state maintains ownership. I don't see what the. Okay, good Early. evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, call to order this special meeting of Laconia City Council, uh, 6 p.m. on, uh, what is today, the 12th, Monday, June 12th. Thank you. All day. In the purpose of tonight's special meeting, which must be over by 7 o'clock, so we have a regularly scheduled meeting statutorily that begins at 7, uh, is to listen to the budget proposal from Laconia School District. So we welcome school board members and staff members. And uh, who's going to take the lead tonight? Christine, all right, you're up. That would be me. <coughs> well, thank you for having us this evening. I'm just going to review the process a little bit before we begin because it's a different process than what you've seen in the past. Um, one of the goals that I was um, presented with is to present a budget that the needs were met for the district. Um, rather than building a tax cap compliant budget, we wanted to show what our overall needs are first. So there is some variations to the budget proposals that you will see in this process, and I will explain all of those clearly. If we just begin with um, opening up to page three, I just want to go over a couple of things. Uh, we have grant funded positions. Um, several of our teaching positions are funded either in whole or in part by federal grants such as Title I, Title II, IDA. Those are the bigger ones that you might have heard of. Um, the amount of these grants are not normally uh, determined by the government until the budget process has been approved Christine, and completed. Christine, could I interrupt you? Just, could you pull the microphones over towards you there? That would be helpful. Is that better? Thank you. Okay. Um, in preparing the budget, we make the best um, effort to accurately predict what the amount of each grant will be based on previous years. Um, but the overall trend in grants is um, the entitlements are shrinking, um, shifting the cost to maintain these um, positions to the local community. Um, the district budget does not include these amounts. However, um, we feel that it's important to um, have descriptions of these positions. Um, so it will inform you about the information and to have an overall understanding of the employees and their roles. Um, and the positions that are listed below there on page two are just um, a few of our grants that we have, but not all of them have come in yet. So these are, are the grants that we've actually been awarded in their amounts and the positions that they cover. Page three. Sorry, page three. On page four, I'm Take a question as you go along, or? Sure. How does that number compare to the year before? Um, so it's actually an increase, um, but I don't know the specific amount because in prior years, everything was lumped, cons- um, lumped together. So I don't know the differential, but we do, or have, we do receive a couple more grants this year, um, such as the, uh, we have the adult education, and um, <coughs> the other one is, a system of care grant so the grants on so on page three is this the amount of grants that you do have correct that's what's funding these teachers um, s- some of these positions are not just teachers they're social workers they're behavioral specialists grant administrators these are just some if you go to the very back it talks about all the grants that we receive which is over four million in grants yeah, so this that. is just um, the smaller grants that we receive that are not mentioned in the budget. So the four million in grants you've received that too? Yes. Yes. This coming year. Yes, that's correct. On page four, it's just a budget guide, just for those who might not be familiar with the um, the budget code, because much of our financial data is represented in this report is referenced by an account number that identifies the expense category. In the district's accounting system, um, we have four codes. So I gave you an example of what those codes look like. So the fund would be 21 that we'll be discussing tonight. So everything will begin with the 21. And then the function that you'd be looking at would either be an 1100 or 1200. And I gave you a breakdown of all those function codes. The object code as well, which would be your supplies, as an example, and the location. In the district, we have nine locations. And then the last coding would be for projects. Those project numbers will not be shown in this budget, again, because they're separate. And because they're funded by the federal grant or state, they're not part of our overall general fund operating. They stand alone. And let me give you an example. If we could all just quickly p- turn to page 20. So 
in just a few m moments when I go back, I'm going to go over a comparison of a consolidated budget to kind of give you the overall arching um, analysis of how our budget is comprised. But on page 19, you'll see that this is Pleasant Street School. So Pleasant Street School's enrollment in what we currently have in the projection is listed. And then you can see just looking at the Pleasant Street budget, you have a function total, you have an object total. So you can kind of get an overall glimpse of just what's happening in this building alone. And one of the biggest changes that you'll see in this budget this year is that you'll have on page 20, you'll have the account codes above and you'll have justifications below. So they tie out to each code. So you can see what each code represents. So example, the first one there is all teacher salaries are contractual. Um, Pleasant Street School has 22 teachers. We have 19 that are full-time equivalent. Three teachers are funded through the Title I grant with benefits. Just to give you an idea how the, the grants are tied to the budget. So you can see that some of these positions are just mentioned, but they're funded by grants and so forth. So you can just go through and see every account will have a description. You will have that for all nine locations and they are color coded as you enter a new location. Uh, Christine, when you say there, <coughs> some of the teachers are uh, with grants, they're not forever grants. So how long do they run and do you continue with them afterwards in the budget? Well, we never know how long the grant will last, but typically um, we are assured for like Title I is a typically a long-standing grant. If we were to have the money, um, sh as the money does shrink, we would have to either look at how the district would like to continue those programs and see if that's something the district would support and we continue to fund through the general fund or we would have to make a reduction at that time. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. Any questions about how each building is going to be laid out? It's very detailed by, like I said, every building. So you can go and look at all the minutia of every line item if you choose to. And I'd be happy to answer questions for you either today or in the near future if you want to send me an email if you have a specific question about that. But what I'd like to do is spend more of our time in the front of the book, which is the consolidated. Just one more question before you leave, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Um, you mentioned the, on page three and then the corresponding four million in the back. Can you point us to that page that you were going to yep. cross-reference to? So on page 61, so we're projecting to receive four million six hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars roughly in, in grants. So the numbers <coughs> on page three are, are in addition or within this four point? In addition. These are, um, let me just check one thing. They are already included. So just I want to make sure I'm grounded. Well, take me through that <coughs> one more time. So page three is a subset of page 61. Because a lot of the grants that are funded on page 61 are mentioned in the budget yep. with the exception of the ones that are on page 3. There's no, because they don't have a single line item, there's no mention of them. So I wanted to show here's the other grants that are not mentioned in it, but here they are. Okay. So the difference is the list on page 3 are actual employment positions. Correct. Whereas 61 includes program money, et cetera, et cetera. Program money and positions as well. But f so for an example, let me give an example. So Title I is a teacher line, so the function is 1100. So we have a be behavioral specialist. They don't get charged to an 1100 function, so it's not going to be mentioned in there. So that's why I mentioned them at the beginning, because I don't want you to think that these are only the positions that we get. We also get additional money for behavioral specialists, social workers, but there's no accounting in, the, in this budget that ties out to that specific account number. And the, the, the account assignments that you use are consistent with what the school um, with the state. board of education yep. state yep. education and what but you're yeah. saying to us is that there just isn't a function code for that particular that's item listed in, in the, the general on page three. yes okay Got yes because we have a separate accounting code that we use for the grants alone and they stand in that on that side of the ledger okay. yep So if we could all just go back to, I'm going to go back to page six. 
and feel free to interrupt me anytime if you have specific questions. <coughs> I won't go line item by line item in here, but again, this is a consolidated figures of this is what I'm going to go over is by the detail of objects, and I will highlight some of the major changes so you can kind of see what is going on and the reason for the changes. I would like to point out <coughs> that um, because this is my first year with the budget, one of the things that we have looked at was to try to consolidate and um, uh, standardize some of our accounting so it's kind of hard to track all the dollars this year but going forward it'll be a little bit more clear and transparent because what I found when we were going through the budget is that some buildings were charging this the same purchase to a different line item so we decided to standardize that so you'll see that there's some ins and outs of money moving especially with the special ed accounts and I'll talk about that a little bit more as we go through it so if you hear me mention the reallocation that's what it's for okay so the first one is we're going to talk about is the salaries because that is the biggest one. So under the collective bargaining agreement, under the, um, the uh, LEA, excuse me, the uh, minus 183,000, that represents a lot of things changing. For example, um, we have put in a, we have requested a new woodworking teacher. Um, we've requested a new computer programming specialist. Um, as well as we have a couple of positions that have been eliminated due to attrition. Um, those would be two special education positions and a social studies teacher. And as well as some people have um, come and go. So again, the attrition changes gives us the, the net effect of that it's a decrease of the 183,000. The one right below it for the EAL we have, um, due to IEP, um, we've had to add a special ed behavioral specialist this year, um, as well as a one-to-one -one sign language. We have also added um, a guidance director, which is a professional employee, not a teacher. And we also have requested a new middle and high school tech facilitator. We'll talk more about those positions as we go through this process as well. So that's the net difference of the 96,000 as an increase. And how that's a negative. And hear what you're saying. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Can you explain that that's a negative salary adjustment? Yeah, I'll get one. So, so what he was asking is, I'll just skip down a couple line items. So the salary adjustment account is the holding account for a couple of things. The largest one is the LEA um, negotiations that we just approved for the teacher's contract. So the increase for that is found in this account, as well as the track changes. If we have any cha uh, teachers moving from a bachelor's to a master's degree, we hold $20,000 for that. And then we also have the admin um, raises for the 19 administrators as a holding account. So right now, everything in that account is just a placeholder, and it'll get reallocated uh, once things were approved. As the teacher contract was approved, this was already done prior, so those monies will be reallocated when I do the final budget. Um, and so you can kind of see that the difference of the 183 will offset that 619 is what Mike was asking me to just point out. Going back up for the, um, the collective bargaining agreement for LASS, um, that net increase there is just to um, pay for the raises which are contractual by um, the union contract. The non-union um, staff um, contract, um, oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake earlier. The 96,000, let me back up, my apologies. The 96000 was for staffing changes to have a new part-time secretary at the middle school and to pay for the raises per the collective bargain agreement. All the other positions I mentioned earlier fall under the non-union. My deepest apologies on that. So let me just rephrase that. For the 198, that represents the behavioral specialist, the middle and high school tech facilitator, um, that represents the one-to-one uh, -one sign language teacher and the guidance director. So my apologies. The administrators, the difference there, the, um, the decrease of the 133,000, that was the elimination of the Dean of Students um, position, as well as staffing changes from last year to this year. <coughs> 
we already talked about the salary adjustment account um, and then one of the other changes I'd point out is under the substitutes uh, we've taken a look at doing some things differently in the building and utilizing our staff um, a little bit differently so we were able to cut about thirty thousand dollars in the substitute overall for the district so you can see just in salaries alone we have about five hundred and ninety thousand dollar increase moving on to benefits so the health insurance we had a net increase of about 7.3 percent for health insurance this year um, which you can see is 466,000 I'd also like to point out that due to the recent contract passing of the <coughs> teachers contract they will be paying 2 percent of their premium so we had an additional sixty three thousand dollars in change savings that is shown here under the FICA, the large increase of the 49000 is tied to the teacher's contract as well, and so would be the retirement. So the salaries were listed up above in the 100s, and all the benefits that correlate will be listed under the 200s. Um, Christine, earlier um, I asked how many retirees there were. I think the number was nine. That's correct. And you're allowed five under the... Uh, Collective bargaining agreement? And I was wondering how the other four were paid. I didn't quite catch the explanation, so I wonder if you could. So tell me. we we budget for five a year. The contract allows it. We created a memorandum of agreement with the other four. Those monies will come out of next year's budget. So they won't get received it this year until they'll July first. They'll receive it on July first. The monies. Yes, and there won't be any addition additional um, employees eligible for next year because okay. that money has already been allocated so we have four that will get it this year and there's one that wanted to wait until next year okay. so the money was budgeted so between the two of the benefits and the salaries um, you can see the benefits alone was eight hundred and thirty two thousand dollars so between those two alone just to run some quick numbers that's one million four hundred twenty two thousand dollars the overall increase to the budget that we're asking is one million four hundred fifty five thousand so that you can quickly see that ninety eight percent of this budget increase is due to salaries and benefits alone well and i think <coughs> the, the thing that jumps out at me here uh, in that column is that your cost <coughs> of our cost school district cost of benefits is fully two-thirds of every dollar you pay out in salaries that's staggering when you pay out a dollar in salaries you're paying out 67 cents roughly in benefits to that same person the cost of benefits is two-thirds of what the actual salary is mm -hmm. nice work I mean I just don't see how that's sustainable over the long term uh, that, that's the biggest thing that we see um, faced with the district for what I should say I'll see for facing the district is that even keeping pace with um, the CPI is not even keeping pace with the health insurance costs so I mean they're they're going like this so it just makes things harder um, in New Hampshire retirement um, just makes things yeah I mean you add those two the two line two items together and you got eight million dollars uh, yeah. so. yeah. so. The overall budget in itself, when you can, when you look at the entire piece of the pie, which we will shortly, you'll see that it's about seventy-four percent. So let's assume that you're correct, and that it's not sustainable over the, and then it's not sustainable over the long term. Oh, we've got to find a way to make it sustainable. So how do we do that? And I'm not asking for an answer right now, but that's just a long-term, short-term and a long-term question that we need to be asking ourselves as, as we go forward. Yeah. Councilor well, Libman was talking about that the other night. We were talking about goal setting. I mean, you can't, I mean, you're headed toward one for one, a dollar for benefits for a dollar of salary. And we're not alone. I mean, that's just a statewide issue. And um, the district is moving. We're thinking outside the box and trying to get creative. And there's ways <coughs> that we'll be looking at, um, you know, going out to bid and looking at different health insurance providers and doing anything we can do to try to maintain that and control that. We have a very good wellness program um, that some of the grants you saw on the front. Um, so we're trying to get our employees to get active and to get um, the wellness going so that they can get incentives and 
healthy employees keeps our, our rates low. But I, I just think that pretty graphically illustrates the big the big picture issue here. Uh, yep. That that's that's a is this a, is this alarming a number. Is this a statewide problem? I mean, is yeah. this a absolutely? And and everybody's facing that so that same dilemma in terms of the rising health costs. And absolutely, and there's some districts that received over a twelve percent increase. Yep. I mean, speaking of a private business owner, if I had to pay out seventy cents in benefits for every dollar I pay in salary, we'd be long out of business. I think there's a lot of businesses that that would go that <laughs> route if that were if that were the formula. Yeah. So. So I, I mean, I think that um, on the health insurance side of things, and I think in the um, time that I've been on the council, I think the schools were ahead of the city's plan design issues I think for a number of the years and then I think you know we've for a variety of reasons we've been able to do some other things but if I'm not mistaken the city's health insurance costs today are, uh, are less than they were um, in 2011 11, yes. mm -hmm. and you know part of that is plan design but part of that's also related to the whole um, salary picture um, as well so there's a connection and collective bargaining to to that but I do think that that is um, an area that needs to be we've you know, taken worked steps. on and I hear you I yep. hear you doing and that most recently we're taking steps with the collective bargaining agreement they're going to pay an additional two percent so by the end of the contract it would be they'd be paying ten percent of the premiums yeah. so, so we're taking we're moving in the right direction so, so just and again just for my <laughs> my former professional experience the the wellness things are are good up here but in terms of when you looked at um, in the ACA when they looked at the exchange products um, when they built wellness into the products they provided no financial um, benefit in the trend of cost mm -hmm. for those things that's not to say those things aren't worthwhile doing um, uh, but that in terms of kind of and I know you have a health insurance consultant are you still using the same gentleman that you were for a number of years. Uh, okay, what was his name? Um, yeah, he came here a couple a of times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think that that, because the retirement system is the only way you can control that is by employing fewer people per, <laughs> because that's controlled by the. And we're in the state. people business. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, seventy-four percent of your costs are labor related. Yep, and that doesn't even account for the contractual service that we're obligated to pay. So when you when you start looking at the pie, which we'll get to in a minute, you'll quickly see that our discretionary budget is very minimum at best. Can you help to go through and to identify which of these uh, benefits costs we actually have any control over? Because I think you're going to find that we don't have a lot of control over the vast majority. That is correct. Unfortunately, um, the health insurance, like what Mr. Pearson was asking me just to briefly go over, was the control. We don't have control over the health insurance. The only way that we can control that is, again, through wellness. The more people are actively involved, hopefully the um, Well, you do have control over it through collective bargaining. Right, going out to bid and changing providers and, and things of that nature, having them pay, you know, premium shares, things of that nature. We're working in those directions. A level as well. of policy is offered. But when they set the rates, that it's it's out of our control because it's all based on the claims. Um, so that's what I was referring to. Um, the FICA is all tied out to the salaries. The retirement is an unfunded mandate by the state. Um, course reimbursement is um, per the collective bargaining agreement. Unemployment is all tied out. Work as comp. We're working with um, the joint loss committee that has been resurrected to try to bring down those um, claims. Um, I mean, the reason we're paying less in health insurance in the city right now than we were six years ago is because the the level of the program offered to employees has has been significantly altered any number of times in that in, in in that time period. And we've done the same. And, and we're going to look at it next year again. I mean, that's the only options you have is to... And we have to collectively bargain that as well. I mean, Correct. With, with, with our employees, too. So yep. it's it's not that it's not doable. Nope. Anything's doable. You just got to got to be creative with the state passing on more unfunded mandates. We've, we've got to look in other areas. 
Um, moving on to contracted services, the second one there under the 1100, the the uh, $40,000 reduction there is because we decided to make some program changes. Um, we will not be using JAG next year. Um, under 312, which is a big one, that 379,000, it's really not a cut, it's a reallocation. So if you look at the 312 and then you scroll down almost halfway through the columns under the 330, you can see that it's a 413. Again, it's just standardizing how we're going to start charging things out in the, in the future so that everybody, there's a consistency of what's being charged to what accounts moving forward. What is that contracted service for 413? So it can be any special ed contracted service or um, a contracted service for either um, uh, like um, uh, speech, OT, Speech PT. pathology. Or yes. Or. Yep. So it has to do with the student, not, not so much for the facility. That's correct. Okay. Those will fall under the 400s, contracted service for waste management and things like that. Yeah. These are mostly people that are working one-on-one -on -one with our students. Um, they might be a one-to-one -one nurse. They might be, like I mentioned, OTPT is another one. Um, sign language. <laughs> and those are mostly, again, those are um, dictated by IEPs. Um, the other one is that I'll point out, not big, is the extended school um, year program. That's for special ed. Those, again, are driven by IEPs. So the overall changing there is um, just a small decrease of about $16,800. Moving into um, the 400s, um, you can see just some of the water and sewer contracted services here. This is a reallocation to software. So you'll see a decrease here, but when we get to the software line, you're going to see a large increase. Again, standardizing to go forward. Now, contracted service building, what, uh, what's that? So those, can, those are going to be um, your waste management. Um, those are going to be your HVAC contractors, boiler contracts, things of that nature. Special projects, we have that, those funds earmarked for um, security, uh, for cameras and lighting issues that we have at the buildings. That's what will be addressed at the elementary this year. And we have some exterior repairs at the, um, at the high school that we'll be looking at. Again, these are all consolidated figures. And if you want to see how each one of these numbers are broken down, you'll be able to see that in each location and the rest of the budget. Um, if there's no other questions on that page, I will keep moving. So the big ones under the 500s, um, we have Again, the handicapped transportation, we were able to um, do some things differently in our special education department. I think it's important to point out to um, the staff, um, including um, Ms. Hines and the special education administrators, we were able to bring a lot of students back in house and to create programs, indiv individualized programs around them in the district instead of sending them out of the district. Um, so we did have some transportation decreases there. However, you'll see some increases in equipment that we might have had to purchase to make those programs happen in the buildings. Um, so doing things differently and thinking out of the box is um, really paying off for us this year. Um, we have an overall savings this year from special ed um, that we'll talk about in just a little bit. Um, the networking one is the big one that's kind of right down in the middle of the page under 532. Um, that is showing the full cost of what we expect. However, we do get what's called E-rate. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with what E-rate is, but it's a, um, it's a discounted telecommunication service that we get. So we will get 80% of those monies back and that will be listed on the revenue side. So you'll see the expenses here, and then we'll be, get the 80% reduction on the revenue side. So that's why you see the full increase there, the big increase, excuse me. Um, the other one is, the other changes here is the tuition for handicap for public um, is pretty much kind of a flip between the non-public. So overall, in that account, it's an increase of $24,000. 
supplies. So the supplies for um, the six tens have decreased. Again, this is mostly a reallocation, charging things um, as a standardizing going throughout the district. So you'll see the um, decrease there, but you'll see some custodial supplies are going up. And um, you'll also see, sorry. Under a software, yep. which is up, I understand that every uh, sixth grader, when he goes in, gets his own personal computer. Is that correct? Eighth grader. Eighth grader? Yes. And that we'll talk about when we get to the uh, 700s under the equipment. That's part of our strategic plan. Yep. Um, so. Well, we can just go right into new equipment if you like. So you'll see the 741s is an increase of the 84,000. Um, that is a, we have come up with working with the technology department to put our equipment on a five year replacement cycle. Something that we're starting to move forward with. We have um, some, we have a lot of equipment, excuse me, that's over eight years old. Um, so we're gonna start a replacement plan. So this year the replacement plan would be um, about 54 desktops at the high school um, and that would encompass one computer lab um, and about 30 classroom computers um, that are about eight years old. Um, the other is we have about 39 desktops at the middle school um, and that initiative to the one-to-one, -one, um, Mrs. Bear, that you were talking about is the eighth grade laptops. Okay. That's where you'll see that increase. And then for the elementaries, they're already on their own. Um, between the elementaries, they're already on their own um, recycling um, replacement cycle, excuse me. So this year it'll be Pleasant Street School, and they'll get eight laptops and five desktops. Um, and then the media center will be, will be replaced this year. And then Elm Street will be next year and so forth. And then it'll be Woodland. So it's gonna rotate. And that's it for the equipment. So you can see the overall increase there. Under the 800s, um, principal in um, interest that, that's a little self-explanatory. The biggest one down here is the 180,000. We have 180,000 going to the special education trust fund this year, um, and we feel that we have sufficient funds to um, carry us forward. Um, so we will not be um, adding more monies to the special education trust fund, which is why you see the decrease there of 180,000. So and what we'll do you have in that fund? Um, to date, do you, do you know? It was 107 and we just put in 180, so 287, that's what I was going to say, 287,000. Is that the fund that the city's maintaining on our side? That's correct. Correct. Yep. And that, that one's for the special ed. Special ed. There's several others. So that's for <coughs> unexpected uh, out-of-district placements, that sort of thing? Yep, or even if, there, if we even receive a significant child that would move in district that we could create a program. So it's for both, any unexpected special education expenses that arise. There's a health insurance stabilization fund too, right? Yep, and a maintenance. Yep. So that's the overall budget. Um, and then you have on page eight, you just have, again, the same information, just broken out a little bit differently to give you an overall, the big picture by function and object. Um, so you can just see if you wanted to look at what is regular education responsible for, what is special education looking like, and so forth. So I won't go through that again. I'd like to move on to page 9 and 10, which is probably most will have our questions here. So for um, <coughs> the chart below here, that piece of pie that I was referring to earlier, 74% of the overall budget um, is salary and benefits. Um, and then the other pieces of, that, of the pie will be contracted services, um, you know, such as waste management, we have HVACs, we have first student transportation, um, just to name a few. A few. Um, and then listed below um, is where we'll talk about the different proposals. So again, we were asked to present a budget based on what our overall needs are. So when we did that, the first column there, um, proposed before teacher's contract, um, you can see that this amount, which is what we, what our needs are, represents a $201,000 over what the tax cap would allow. That is what we need. We understand um, that we are in a tax cap community. So on page 10, um, there is right in the middle, the green is the proposed reductions um, that we would make to get us to be in tax cap compliant. 
is the uh, 210 what uh, I'm going back to what you said earlier about you made this budget non tax cap friendly correct need is, is is that what that two I mean uh, 201 is yes that would get us to be tax cap compliant without the teachers contract without the teachers contract yes it's important to well, like tier one cuts in plain English is what you cut to get down to the tax cap number without the teacher's contract. Yep, it's also important to know that the peach, I like colors, so the peach up top is some of the increases that we would like, that we had put in the budget, and we have some decreases that we also took out of the cut, out of the budget. So we made some concessions because we wanted to do different programming. So, but what I like to point out as an example is the, L, um, the middle school and the high school technology facilitator that you see under the increases, you will see that in the blue, the tier two cuts, it was taken out again. So we we requested some new positions. However, some were have to some were cut again to, to be so able to So you you're not the doing contract. that. That is correct. Okay. So everything in the decreases has been eliminated this year, out of the budget. Tier two has also been reduced, and also the blue and tier three. <laughs> so the overall cuts that we've made this year are almost nine hundred thousand dollars in an effort to support the contract. Thus, still leaving us an unidentified amount of one hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars. Explain that to me so I can understand it. So you're still looking for one hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars. That is correct. Okay, and you expect to come up with that internally, rather. N and that'll get you to the tax cut, right? So, as it tax stands, cap. yes, that would get me to the tax cap compliant. As it stands right now, um, after reviewing our revenues and um, our expenditures, I believe that we will have funds at the remaining this year that we will transfer to the new expendable education trust fund, and with the hopes that we would then request the 137,000 from that fund. So you're going to transfer 137 to the fund and then ask for it back. Is that right? We will transfer a little bit more than that. That's correct because I don't have the final numbers yet of where I'm going to my year end is going to be. But I hope to have more than that um, at the end of this year because it was part of our <coughs> plan, strategic plan to um, support the contract going forward. So we kept everything to if you need it, you get it. But it has to be a clear. Okay, you, you don't have to answer this if you don't know the answer. But if you got a ballpark of where you think you're going to come in. Um, I will say that I'm thinking it's probably going to be around 275. Okay, and that'll be left over from last year's budget. This year's budget. This year's budget. Yes, That's sir. What I mean. Yes, sir. I I'm thinking well, last year, all this, year this year, last year. I'm I'm on a January. Guy. I haven't received all my revenues, such as Medicaid, yet. So it's really hard to pinpoint that number. But I'm predicting about 275,000. Okay, I won't hold you to it. Just okay, good. I'll remember that. Oh, and we're on camera. A couple questions. Um, under the decreases, um, yes. I don't unless I'm. It's written somewhere different uh, that I understand. The facilities uh, maintenance people at the high school. There was two of them there that will let go, mm -hmm. and then you hired another one. Yep, is that correct? So are they listed under the decreases here? They are. So uh, right in the middle, the facilities director for the elementary school for ninety-seven thousand and change, and then right below it, the facility oh. manager for the middle and high school of one hundred twenty-three. Mm -hmm. And to the left of that, you'll see the very last one on the increases. The district-wide facility director is an increase of one hundred twenty-two. So is, is that what that person's pay is? That's since there's only one thing. That's there. total package, benefits and all. Yes. Yes. But that's what this person will receive. Yes. Okay. So it's about um, a net of ninety-eight thousand dollars. Now, by getting rid of, uh, you know, and I'm not going to go into the why or whatever. I mean, that's not up to me. But um, the two people that were there um, had extremely valuable knowledge of the systems there because they were there when they were installed. Because I was on the G. Uh, the committee for that. Um, they knew the boilers, they knew the air conditioning systems, the irrigation systems, everything. Mm -hmm. And they also did a lot of the summer rehabilitation to the building. So I guess what my question is, uh, what do you, f by paying this person this amount, uh, who basically probably knows little of the systems over there. He actually used to be a past employee. So I know he was, but not when this yeah. happened. Nope. Okay. So, um, Paying him this amount, 
and probably everything else will have to be done by contractors, most likely. I would. What, what is the savings? What, what do you, what do you think you're going to pay contractor services to go in and do the boilers, the filters, the, ir the irrigation system that might need some repairs, with, which they could do, uh, all these kinds of things. Overall, by eliminating those two positions, what do you think you're going to save? I think we're going to be in a very good place. This person is qualified to do all of the um, the job responsibilities that the other two were doing. So this one person is going to do all that that the two did? Absolutely, with different structure below them, yes. What's the structure below them? We are taking a look at how to utilize the staff differently. We have, st give you an example, we have an elementary staff and then we've always had our middle and high we're starting to cross utilize so that all the employees now work for the entire district so if I have a custodian that's out at the elementary we're gonna pull somebody from the middle and high school we have Paul who's still there at the middle and high school so we're gonna utilize him a little bit differently going forward okay uh, also normally um, from year to year there was roughly a hundred thousand dollars that was kept in a line item for repairs over the summer yep. to do uh, added uh, uh, remodeling correct of the old structure and yep. things like that is that still going to continue yep we actually uh, sent the check over to the city this week for how much for a hundred thousand dollars okay very good glad to hear yep. that so we're continuing with that practice we didn't do um, and, and I'll even own this one um, because it's my first year we didn't have I did not have a good handle on what the priorities were in the district um, and with this upcoming change with the directors we wanted to wait a year doing any major projects um, we do we are doing some priorities um, that are safety concerns but we're going to take a look and come up with a plan for next summer to do um, some of the major projects so this summer you won't be doing anything over there that's correct the only project that we have going on over there is a the SAU parking lot Yep, but that money is just going to remain into the trust fund until we're ready. Okay, now, uh, why are you bring back a uh, woodworking shop? That was um, the request of the high school because over the years it's been my understanding and um, you can feel yeah, free. We've been cutting electives going forward and um, the the building principal thought that he felt that we could we should be bringing back more electives to this community to get these kids actively involved. Could that woodworking shop in, been combined with the Hewitt Center woodworking shop? I, I know they're probably the a little bit different. The way they look at it is they flow into one another and so specifically what they were trying to do is find more electives that met the demands of kind of the foundations in the college and career ready students and what they were interested in the idea would be that freshman and sophomore year would could be heavy in the woodworking area which would then transition junior senior into the CTE center program the way it's structured in New Hampshire is CTE is primarily junior seniors um, other states do it differently but that's how it is here how many students are going to go into that next year you must well, know if you got a teacher. Yeah, we don't have a teacher currently, so oh, I think that will depend. Um, we so it could be up in the air. It could be up in the air, correct, which happens periodically for certain elective classes. Um, we don't want to hire a teacher just to have a teacher. We want to hire someone that's going to engage the kids, give them useful skills, and so we're being a little picky about that. The um, the facility managers for the middle school and high school was 123,000, and the other one was 97. Right. I, is that three people? No, that, no, was, that was two. That was two. Yes. yes. Okay. So the net difference is about 98 thousand dollars that we save by. Okay. Trying to streamline. It. And the. Um, well, that you might have saved it, but depending on well, how we'll much see. contract yeah, and services you're actually going to need. Out. Well. I think what we do is next year we see how much that's increased or not overall and then you know then we'll have, have you got a contracting service that. already lined up no we don't nope we're going with the same contracts as we currently have in place um, and I know that the uh, facilities director was with us today and he was hands-on fi fixing a lot of condensers today with air conditioning so I'm pretty confident that we'll be okay um, these out of the game um, the stipends at at the middle school is that something that's been there all along yes okay all right very good thank you
I'm not sure, uh, Christine, that I'm completely clear. So I'm not completely clear on, from a budget construction standpoint, what the difference is between the peach decreases and the proposed tier one cuts are. Okay, so let, that's a great point. So the peach has already been changed in the bottom line of the budget. So the budget that's proposed before the teacher's contract, these changes are already been um, made. The tier one is to get us to tax cap compliant because when we created the budget again, it was here's what our needs are. We don't meet tax cap compliant. Green is getting us to okay, tax cap. Okay, even with the, the net savings of 178, 672, you were still $200,000 short of tax cap compliance. Exactly. Okay. Yes, sir. And then the blue, in an order to support. So then you went looking for another $200,000. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we showed you what that would look like. And then in the blue, in order to, in, for an effort to support. Um, so the school board hasn't actually voted to do the green? They have already voted to do the green. To do the green. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because we have to present a tax cap compliant. And the blue. And the, <coughs> and ultimately. Yeah. Yes. And also the blue, blue, blue too. The blue is the new stuff to, to partially fund the new teacher's contract. Yes, to lessen the impact of the teacher's contract. So that leaves us a remaining amount to be identified, which I mentioned earlier. Given the my current situation right now, I would predict that we'll be putting money into the new Education Stabilization Trust Fund, and then we'd be asking for the 137 to help fund those positions. If not, the only other option we'd have is to make further reductions, which we do not want to do and do not support because we've already cut almost 900,000. Go ahead, we've got 13 minutes. You want me to keep going? What would no. you like? <laughs> Can I ask a couple questions? Sure. <coughs> All right, good. Page 12. Okay. Uh, under contracted services, the, the first chart up above there, third one up from the bottom, that one in contracted services SP is that uh, what is the the last one there? Where are you? Uh, I'm in this chart right 20? here. Budget oh, detail chart. Elementary. So Testing assessment material. It's the last one in the chart here. Page right one. Contracted service special, special ed. Elementary. That, with that figure way over to the right, those two large figures. Does that just move somewhere else? It is. It's okay. reallocated. Yep. Okay. Perfect example of the reallocation. So. The budget that you've seen in previous years, you had an elementary overall budget, which kind of was the overarching for all the buildings. This year, because we're configured a little bit differently, we um, reduced a special education administrator. We have put in all the expenses into the buildings. So you'll see that that's why there's a $650,000 decrease here, but it's really not a decrease. It's been reallocated to the buildings. So you'll see those increases if you went to like- Allocated to buildings. Hmm. Pleasant Street, Students Elm Street, Woodland Heights. Okay. Three yep. And I tried to do um, asterisks if you'll see them. Um, let me give you an example. Let's go to, let's just all go to page 22 because it just, it opens right up. Or I should say, page 21, perfect example. Um, the third line down, the 12. I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> so 1,200, um, three contracted services. Yep. The in that's why you see an increase of 178,000, which I put a little asterisk. That's the reallocation from that 650 being put into the building level, and you'll see that going forward. And and, and this is uh, nothing to do with buildings; it's to do with students. Students, yep, that's where the students are. So that's where the um, the expenses are going to get charged to, okay. and it's just the management and, like I said before, standardizing. Yep, so perfect. And you'll see those asterisks throughout the budget. Yeah, the first year when you when you come in with a new budget, it, it's very hard to track all the dollars. Moving forward, you'll be able to see like for like what's happened from prior year into new year. Yep. <coughs> Keep going. going. <laughs> um, <coughs> what specifically do you want me to go over? I mean, I can, do you want me to go over a oh, line? I so I mean, all right, let's just, I'll just show you the different buildings. So Elm Street is on page 25. It's kind of my lilac color. So all the buildings will show you what the current enrollment is, what the projection enrollment is. They'll show you the class sizes, because um, and it will show you the number of sections so you can see how many class sizes we have. 
everyone is broken down by the overall function so you can quickly see what makes up those overall increases again just so you can see salaries and benefits those are your biggest numbers um, in all these accounts so one thing I don't see here is is because it's not really part of the budget procedure is you have enrollment projected enrollment class size etc what do you have easy access to as part of your planning process what the what the building capacities are um i don't have that that's a good point i can add it for you next year and i can get it for you uh, you know, know for example laconia middle school 423 and that's 754 you know i think we had the core facilities built for 750. yeah yeah i don't have the capacities listed out i don't know them to be to be honest with you but i can put that in here and i'll be happy to email that to you okay On page 45, down at the bottom of that chart, says salaries, custodian, adult, ed. Hold on one second. With uh, page what? 45. 45. 45. Yep, it's got 18,740 at the very bottom. Yep, that. that is that uh, going to be a um, worker of the of the school, or is that somebody coming in at night to nope, do? No, that's our employee. Your employee. Okay. Yep. Yep, we don't have anybody um, with the transition for the ALT program coming back into the high school. Uh, we don't have any contracted services any longer um, for custodial work. We were using um, Joyce J material, but go. that's gone. Correct. On the next page, it says building maintenance, $2,600, $43,000, an increase of thirty-four. What, what is that jump for? So this is the Hewitt. So the jump there is a reallocation. So what we had was, you'll see the change being offset by the high school. We had a high school custodian going over to the Hewitt. And so now we just charging it to Hewitt to get a real understanding of what the Hewitt costs to run that building. So it's just a reallocation. So if you look at page, let me bring you there so you can see it. Page. So it's on 43. So if you look at um, kind of, I don't know, quarter of the way down, 26, 20, 117, <coughs> 45, you'll see a decrease of 29,000. Yep. That's the transfer to uh, the Hewitt. Okay. And it's not a like for like dollar because there's, there's salaries that are being netted against that. So you're making a concerted effort to cost account building by building uh, absolutely more realistic especially base. when we have to um, show tuition expenses for the Hewitt and we bill out to other districts they want to see what our expenses are and it's really hard to do that if we're not showing all the expenses being charged to the account so on page 52 the telecommunication internet and computer software stuff is increasing of 24 and 23 is that also um, moving monies around? So, yep, that's with E-rate. So that's the big piece with E-rate. We get 80% reimbursed from the telecommunications. So you'll see that on the revenues. Okay. Yep. Okay, are we at the point of general questions? No? Yeah. Sure. What, whatever we want. So any general remarks or questions? From, we have about... Seven or eight minutes here. Just have also a procedural question with respect to um, the manager and uh, Donna, um, our finance director. In terms of um, sort of the, the budget that gets incorporated within the our when we do the motions on the various things and how the money would come in from various sources. For example, the stabilization fund would have. They just want to make sure we get all the mechanics sorted out. I mean, we don't have to do this right now, but that's just one thing. I just want to make sure that all that stuff is. Years ago. Yeah. So, so what's in the budget book right now in the overall municipal budget is a tax cap friendly, and it's the tax cap number. So, what would have to happen is there'll be a transfer in out of the account to offset the additional <coughs> appropriations that are there. So, we'll do that during the budget adoption, if it's the will of the council to be doing that. Yes. That's 
we would bring it in as a one-time revenue instead of it being a revenue coming from adequacy <coughs> or from federal lunch program it would be a transfer out of a stabilization account no different than uh, when we transferred some money out of the firefighter staffing stabilization when we phased the safer grand firefighters in and that's the final piece of that money is in the budget I presented to you is making that final transfer so we would make an amendment to the school budget to reflect that dollar amount as a revenue and identify then the transfer would happen in the new fiscal year and it's tax so, cap compliant because it's not an amount raised by taxes it's not raised through property taxes correct so we're going to approve a tax cap compliant school board budget we don't pass the school board budget we don't, no, we're, we're, we don't. we're going to just part of our overall budget yeah we're going to approve as part of our overall um, budget a tax cap compliant school board budget right no I, I got that technically it's their, I think technically it's their budget could be way out of tax compliance and we make it up somewhere else without now, we're going to have a specific number to approve to to consider for our budget as it relates to the school correct no well yes we have a city budget and we have a school budget the, the school is a department of the city so the school has its number what I'm hearing what we probably will do is we'll make an amendment to the budget to add hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars to appropriation and add hundred and thirty seven thousand to revenue not raised by property taxes and that leaves the impact exactly where it is we'll in make the, bottom the whole line budget, when you the budget together correct <laughs> That's all. I'm, I'm just trying to get a hold of the process. Uh, whether, whether I'm using the correct English or not, as part of the budget, we're going to approve a tax cap compliant school budget. And then we're going to manipulate the numbers afterwards or before beforehand. I'm using the language that's correct. In conjunction with, it'd be it'd be no different if you said on the city side we want to spend an additional fifty thousand dollars towards this service. Let's raise our motor vehicle registration by fifty thousand, and there's no change. It's still tax cap compliant, even though we're going to spend an extra fifty thousand. It's coming from a non-property tax source same non-manipulation will happen with the school <laughs> budget <laughs> we'll identify an increase in appropriation and identify an increase in non-property tax revenue uh, it all balances out in the wash uh, I, guess I think for several years they've been turning over money that wasn't expended into those accounts uh, yeah I, I know that I know that I'm just I'm so making sure that everybody understands we're, that, we're, that I understand the process and we know how we're going about doing this. We're, we're going to pass tonight on first reading as part of your packet a yeah. series of budget resolutions. Right. Okay. There's no budget resolution in there for the school district. I understand that. It's just part of the overall general fund budget. Thank you for your There's no separate vote to approve the school district budget. That's what I'm trying to say. Thank you for your explanation. I think I understand <laughs> it now. Sorry. Anyone else? I, I, if I would Councilman. make a comment, I think from where we were a couple of weeks ago, I think in terms of the um, stabilization account that we, we also have to add that by a motion through the budget process because it, it doesn't exist at the moment right mm -hmm. um, the the uh, I think the, the positive news with respect to the city's contribution is that the schools covering the first year's um, contribution to make that contract whole whereas a couple weeks ago we weren't sure that that was going to be the case that they would need to dip into the <coughs> half million so that that I think is a positive in terms of kind of where we're at and and the success that that's likely to have yeah I think from the school's perspective school district our goal is to keep <laughs> that fund as strong as can be for as long as can be and so you're not going to see us doing anything you know sort of out of the ordinary to any monies that we have we're happy to put in that fund oh, and that's I would just like to add on a personal note that that uh, uh, I think this presentation that you all have given us tonight is exceptional and uh, certainly on my part and I think I probably speak for the whole council very much appreciated to have this much insight into the way you constructed the budget and 
you know, we're all in this together. It's corny, but it's true. <laughs> and and uh, these are our schools as well as they're your schools. Absolutely. And uh, if we are going to be able to address successfully these long-range issues we face, we're going to, the council, regardless of who's sitting up here and who's sitting out there, the two bodies are going to have to work closely together to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Thank it you. takes a village. Just so there's uh, no confusion. I wasn't going to go that far. <laughs> <laughs> Just so there's no confusion, I wholly agree with the mayor. And I really applaud um, the members of the council that worked with the school board and the school board um, and the teachers union too in coming up with a resolution that works for everybody. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for your okay, support. Thank you very much for being here, all of you. Okay, Madam Clerk, we've got like one minute.